I was recently inspired to create this look using Makeup Geek eyeshadows, which have been discontinued. The brand doesn't exist, but I was recently watching one of my absolute favorite podcasts, The Sesh. I love these girls so much. Go and check them out. But they were interviewing Marlena from Makeup Geek, and it just reminded me how much I loved Makeup Geek eyeshadows. So I thought that I would share with you how you can add some new life into some of your old shadows, because these have been discontinued. They're really old. They're losing their pigmentation. They're losing their texture, but there's ways that you can still make them work. So if that interests you, then just keep on watching. And if you're new here to the Makeup Chair channel and you enjoy tutorials like this, then I might suggest hitting the subscribe button below. It's totally free. And if you're already subscribed, then thank you and welcome back. Now let's get started. So we're gonna start off with an eyeshadow primer because primer is key. This will give the shadow something to hold on to and this will then increase the pigmentation that older shadows tend to lose. And because this is tinted, it's also going to disguise any natural discoloration on my lids, which allows the shadows just to pop that little bit more. So I'm gonna keep the lid slightly damp and this is just gonna add a little bit more grip for us. So my first shadow that I'm gonna take is about half a shade darker than my skin tone. So this is gonna be our mid-tone and I'm gonna use this to create like a framework around my eyes. So take your favorite blending brush and my next tip is to make sure you're holding it a little further down on the handle. Older shadows will lose their consistency within their texture. So you might end up with some patchiness. I'm pairing that with a damp base and you're kind of asking for trouble. So holding the brush a little further down on the handle will soften the pressure and allow for a smoother blend. And I'm just working this into the crease of the eye, leaving a little gap right underneath the brows and then just slowly bringing it down onto the lid. Next, I'm gonna move on to using this little baby blending brush, which I love so much, and I'm going to use the shade Mocha. So what I'm first of all gonna do with this is use this to mark out my lid a little bit more. So I'm kind of squinting so I can see where the hood of my eye is. And then I'm just going to slowly build this shadow up to kind of recede that hoodedness. Think of it like contouring your eye shape. Now I know what you're thinking. You're using a blending brush to apply this, and then you're gonna use your other blending brush to blend it out even more. Wouldn't be better just to use a flat brush or your fingertips? And yes, definitely to build up to the point where I want to get this to. However, because these shadows are slightly older, I find it's better just to keep layering using your blending brushes because if you go straight in with a flat brush or your fingertips to kind of pack the shadow on there, the unevenness of the texture can cause a lot of fallout and then you don't get that same buildup of pigmentation. So I'm gonna be using the two blending brushes to slowly build up to get the shape that I want. And then you should eventually end up with something that looks like this. And this is gonna last a lot longer for us as well. Next, I'm going to take a flat brush and a touch of concealer and just apply this on the lid where I want to apply shimmer. By applying a small amount of concealer, we're actually gonna add some moisture back into our shimmer, which then helps it shine so much more. And I'm using two different shades of shimmer, a lighter one in the inner corner, and then more of a golden one right in the middle but that small amount of concealer underneath is just gonna help them shine so much more. And then I'm gonna take a fade shade. If you've been following my channel for a while, you know what a fade shade is, but basically it's something with a lot of pigment that we use to create this sort of pro finish. So older shadows can look a little bit muddy, so applying a really pigmented shadow, like an orange, a peach, a pink, a red, it will create so much more depth and create that really professional finish. So we're just going around the edges of our shadows and it basically creates the illusion that we have all of these different tones on our lid, but really we just have this extra one. And my final tip, and this is my absolute favorite, is to use a setting spray. Close your eyes and spray over your shadows and watch the magic happen. It adds so much more moisture. Now, not everybody can do this because some people have sensitive eyelids, but I do find that this is your finishing step if you want to add some life back in to those older shadows. And then I finished off with mascara, the rest of my makeup. I applied a little bit of mocha just underneath the eyes. And then there you go. That is how to add some life back into your older shadows. These are maybe seven, eight years old. <laughs> They're really old shadows and they're still going strong. If you wanna see more looks using some of the other shades that I absolutely love from Makeup Geek, definitely let me know. As always, my friends, be kind to yourself, be kind to others, and go and check out the Sesh podcast because they are so lovely and so kind and I know that they will brighten your day because they brighten my day all the time. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.